My name is Kate and I'm part of the events team here at Cambridge International. We're just going to go through a few settings at this point to check that the webinar comes on smoothly. So firstly, let me just check you can hear me through a quick poll. Can everyone hear me? Okay, that's great. It looks like most people can. I'll just pop some instructions in the chat box for anyone that's struggling with the sound. Okay, let's move on to the participation boxes that you can use during this webinar. In the panel to the right, you've got the chat, bo the chat box. Some of you have been using this already. The chat box will be available throughout the, the webinar. Please use it if you have any questions. We will only answer questions during the Q&A sections, however, to make sure that we can keep to time. In the bottom centre of your screen, you can find the status panel. The green tick means you're connected. You can raise your hand to get our attention if we have missed your question, but as we're expecting a high volume of questions, please note we may not be able to answer them all during this webinar. I'll now hand over to Anna, who's our staff chair, and will be moderating this session. Thank you, Kate, and I'm just going to put my camera on as well, so bear with me. Well, um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. It's wonderful to have you all here. My name is Anna Smith and I am Director of the Cambridge Schools Conferences and Senior Education Manager based here in Cambridge. I'm going to put my camera on just so you can see who I am. I will turn it off for much of what I'm saying so we can preserve bandwidth and make sure that everyone can hear us. But I did want to start with a few words of gratitude that Rhonda shared uh, last week and I would really like to share too and that is the huge gratitude and admiration to every single teacher and school leader who has been working so hard through the last year it's been an exceptional time and the work that's gone in has been amazing I'm a former teacher and school leader myself and I often think how on earth would I have coped with the last year to 18 months? And I can only imagine how hard everybody here has been working. So from everyone at Cambridge to everybody who is attending, thank you so much for everything that you are doing. I'm going to turn my camera off now, but leave my microphone on. This is the chance this afternoon to hear from a really excellent panel. We've got some great speakers, speakers from our staff team, but more importantly, speakers who are currently leaders in schools who are going to share their experiences. But it's also an opportunity to hear from you all. One of the things that I take so much pleasure from in these panel sessions is learning from each other. So there'll be lots of time to share and time for questions at the end too. I'm going to start by just saying a few things that really struck me about Rhonda's keynote session and Q&A last week. There was a real focus on the quality of teaching, that the skills that we have as teachers, as leaders, can see us through all sorts of situations including the online environment, that the quality is more important than the tools. I really liked the way she explored in so much depth what engagement was. I think we've all gone in and observed classes with new teachers where they say, oh, that was great. They were really engaged because they were really busy. They were all smiling. They were really busy. And we know that actually they weren't really engaged with the task and they weren't really learning. So I really loved hearing what Rhonda had to say, really unpacking that and helping us understand in more detail what engagement really means and what it looks like. And I love the way, too, she challenged us to think about what we're going to keep. She talked about moving forward, not going back to school, but going forward. 
and really challenging us to think what from the last year we will want to keep and particularly those things that work best with digital so i was i was really inspired and energized by what she had to say i'd love to hear just a little bit from our panel who we'll introduce later but i wonder if each of our panelists could just say very short just one thing that really spoke to you from what Rhonda said. Tabinda, would you like to go first? Thank you, Anna. Um, so for me, what struck me um, in Rhonda's speech and keynote was the planning bit that she spoke about, uh, where she was talking about the learning phase where teacher needs to plan and you know think about what they're going to make the students do. So just because it's a virtual session, we shouldn't forget that we are still dealing with human beings who need to move up, stand up, and you know still be motivated. So the principle was ABCM, autonomy, belonging, competence, and giving them meaning. That's what I found important. Thank you. Thank you, Alka. Uh, thank you, Anna. For me, uh, I loved all the points shared by Rhonda in her question answer session, especially. But I love the idea of setting tasks on the basis of inclusion of certain must have and certain amazing criteria so the students had enough challenges and enough opportunities and teachers could include differentiated learning into the remote model which generally these days teachers find it very difficult to address and they have this they perceive it as a challenge so this was an idea which i love must have an amazing in tasks yeah and i thought amazing was so much better than must have could have some might have it's so much more positive um valerie Thanks so much, Anna. Um, you know, for me, Dr. Bondi's uh, keynote, you know, it was the resounding positivity uh, just radiating from her message. It was so refreshing. It was so encouraging. Uh, I also really loved her emphasis on the importance of, of us reframing our language to shift our understanding of one to one of optimism, I think, and opportunity. Uh, I, I, I really appreciated her practical tips on encouraging teacher thinking, reflection, and adjustment. Those are the things that really stood out for me. Thank you, Valerie. And we're going to hear a lot more from our panel in just a few minutes. But first of all, I've got a little task for you. Um, could we have the next slide, please? We're going to use um, something here called Mentimeter. This is something that I learned about from Claire, who was one of our science panelists the other day. She's one of our trainers. She's a Cambridge teacher. And it's one of the wonderful things about Cambridge. It's learning from each other. So I think this is a wonderful tool to use and I'm going to give you the chance to have a go at that for yourself. Some of you, of course, will know this very well. So I want you now to go to www.menti.com, type in the code that we have put on the screen and our team are also going to put that website and the code in your chat and just think what words or phrases sum up good practice in remote teaching and learning for you and we're going to share that in a minute and you'll see it's going to turn into a word cloud and show us the things that are most important for you And I think, team, we might be starting to get some things up there now. So if we could go, wonderful. Yes, things up there already. And we'll see this will keep changing as more people put things in. So I'll just give you a moment to, to put your answers in there.
And I can see already that engagement as ever is coming out as, as the biggest word. That means, of course, the most of you have, have mentioned that. Um, so really thinking about engagement. I'm seeing patience again. Um, this is a word that only the leaders have come up with. So I'm really interested by that. I think there must be something about the work that we as leaders do with our staff that must make us want to be very patient and encourage that in others too. Um, lots of other things coming up here, communication, that idea of having bite-sized lessons, keeping it simple, using breakout rooms, um, the role of differentiated learning, in um, empathy I'm seeing there as well and inclusivity, that importance of good planning that's coming through. I love that commitment as well. I think that's that's vital, isn't it? Our commitment to our learners and to the work that we do. And again, we can see engaging, we can see equality of opportunity coming through there. Involvement is now becoming a bigger word as well. More people are talking about involvement too. And we can see a lot here on the interactivity, the sense that this is two way. Um, one of our speakers on the primary and early years panel was saying that for a lot of our learners, particularly our um, younger learners, they see the screen as something that can talk to them. They don't think it's something they can talk back to. So this is really important to get them engaging, talking, communicating. We're going to be sharing all the slides and the video with you. So you will be able to come back to this and have a look at this mentee. Um, and as more people contribute, we might come back to this a little later just to see what else has come up. But for now, I'd like to move on to introducing our three panelists. And we're going to start with um, one of my colleagues, another senior education manager, Tabinda Mazar, who is going to introduce herself and then share her thoughts and her experiences. Tabinda, over to you. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everyone. As Anna told you my name, I am based in Lahore, Pakistan. So a big hello to everyone you know, who's joined us from different parts of the world. Um, let me tell you a little about the schools that we work with in Pakistan. So we have um, uh, around 650 Cambridge International Schools, which uh, lie across different parts of Pakistan. Um, I have been a teacher myself, so I, ha I was an English language teacher for middle school. That was like some 20 years ago. My own professional interests lie in teacher collaboration, professional development, and learning communities. Today, I'm going to speak to you as a messenger from the Pakistani schools and the school leaders and teachers to talk about their experience of remote teaching and learning. So I will be focusing on the perspective of teachers. Um, three things I will talk about, collaboration, innovation and impact on teachers well-being of all of this so i i hope that i can tell you and you know share some stories that i have heard and some messages and tips that can be handy for you as teachers so just looking at what we all experience so just putting that all in context if we think about that time you know 18 months ago when the pandemic struck there were some obvious things which changed in teachers practices you know in in our daily lives First of all, the classroom, the physical four safe walls of the classroom changed and gave way to an online live classroom. Suddenly, um, you know, teachers were using technology, but this kind of live sessions where they were all, all the time giving live sessions and were under scrutiny was new. The second thing was the audience changed the, from the students who were we, we were meeting every day. Um, you know, there was an addition of the parents there also, and many teachers have, you know, told interesting, sometimes funny stories of how the parents were interacting with them. So the audience changed dramatically for them. Um, some teachers felt odd when not, they were not able to see their students or hear them well. Um, overall, the readiness level of teachers, you know, to switch to such a complete transition, you know, overnight was something they were not prepared for. So overall, at the dynamics of teaching, the learning environment, the teaching styles, and the management, all of that changed. The first thing that teachers and schools spoke to us about that they felt, you know, as a result of this uh, remote teaching and learning happened was that there was a lot of innovation. 
when they say innovation they talk about the experimentation they all did there were new tools that were explored there were new platforms which were added um they were learning new things every day not just about tools but about the online pedagogy as well um some started experimenting with smaller breakout rooms to bring you know a better effective classroom overall you know teachers there was this funny uh, thing that somebody shared they were like teachers who could not even in, in the beginning use ms teams one year ago are now holding virtual concerts and exhibitions so there was a lot to learn and do however this was not an easy job and when we look at and ask for some tips from schools about if they can tell us you know in innovation what should the teachers or school heads look out for they said we should always give teachers room to make mistakes if they are to innovate and experiment we should also focus on making students and parents partners in the process and making them take ownership rather than working you know all alone ourselves one of the teachers shared you know who had great experience in uh, and was a seasoned teacher but adapting to this change and this technology was something of a fright for her and she said it took her some time and support to become more willing so willingness receptiveness is very important for innovation taking small steps and celebrating your achievement is important last but not least there is a plethora of existing resources lying there and in innovation you know which you may not read need to reinvent the wheel and actually explore resources that are there by colleagues kemi kemi international itself has put up a lot of material on their website for teachers the second element i'll talk about which for without which this innovation would not have been possible that was collaboration collaboration between schools collaboration between teachers and teachers between school heads and teachers and even with parents so i I've, i've been told by the school heads especially in pakistan that they felt that the collaboration was at an all times high um so what were was happening some examples are younger staff had become you know the mentors to the senior staff in teaching technologies but had a bargain of getting to know, learn something from them so overall what we saw in pakistan and schools uh, in pakistani schools uh, landscape was a sense of community coming up a sense of belonging which was of course if, if, if throughout the school fabric and many people mentioned one thing that it was more acceptable for the first time to talk about the issues and problems people were facing this codependency between the school heads and teachers took away that difficult talk element there was more praise from colleagues to one another there was less criticism overall our teachers became less insular and staff meetings became very lively because there was so much to talk about all this innovation collaboration did have an impact on the well-being of our teachers and of course school leaders as well the work life balance that we all talk about and you know the discipline that we feel you we had in school that went totally haywire um some teachers shared an interesting uh, revelation about being very confident as teachers in a physical classroom but having that lack of confidence when they suddenly were you know live and under uh, you know the live cameras and also the scrutiny managing expectations of parents students and you know so all of that pressure which was surmounting on them was something which was having an impact um as far as classroom management is concerned many teachers shared that initially they could not handle because students were more it savvy so they were tricking the teachers and they had to take hold of attendance and sometimes make sure their camera is on but all of that resulted in a lot of pressure you know on part of the teachers and the school leaders so so if we try to wrap it up and think you know what are the messages or some of the strategies from the school heads and the teachers of pakistan for you they would be um let the teachers talk and listen to them so school heads um you know again have been giving this message some of them started support groups just for you know the listening to the teachers which worked really well for them another important thing is about trust so trusting the teachers to get on with the job at hand not being too hard on them cutting some some them some slack giving them agency and autonomy and we know that you know they 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 are doing great thing going out of their way to help teach uh, the students in terms of observations and the scrutiny what heads can do so we we asked a lot of heads and some people suggested that maybe less policing and more support you could still observe but instead of just going in you know with a with a uh, criteria to judge them on why not have a pre chat and talk to them about how they can help with the lesson um taking anonymous feedback from students and starting always with praise what went well 
you know that can be very helpful and drive improvement and last but not least some heads uh, and staff suggested that they have been doing these virtual gts where they have virtual coffees virtual birthdays just for a laugh um, I'm just going to end my uh, uh, talk here by, by again appreciating and resonating Anna's words that we're very thankful and to and grateful to all the teachers and the school leaders who have had this bumpy ride all this time and still continue to do, but they have, you know, come out, you know, triumphant. And we feel that the flexibility and the confidence they have gained through technology will go a long way and make teaching and learning more effective. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm now going to I'm now going to pass on to my colleague Alka Pandey. Thank you. So thank you, Tabinda. I loved your message that taking small steps and celebrating it is such an important mindset to have during these tough and challenging times. You know, so it's it's our mindset which takes us forward, especially the school leaders. You know, who have so much responsibilities: teachers, wellness, students. You know, uh, wellness and learning too, and taking considering parents' stress and anxiety. So thank you for that beautiful message, and warm greetings to everyone here. I'm Alka Pandey from India. I'm heading the Bharti Vidya P. Rabindranath Tagore School of Excellence, a reputed Cambridge affiliated school in the city of Pune. I have around 28 years of experience in the field of education, uh, teaching across university level, different school levels, and across various international and national educational boards. I'm also a Cambridge consultant teacher's trainer and therefore have been associated, associated with various professional development programs as mentor and trainer for teachers. So today I would like to focus on the role of parents during the remote learning and how schools can support them by relating to some of the strategies we explored and adopted in our schools. So sharing a few with you all. Uh, the school leadership, I would say, during these times, especially during the early months of the pandemic, has been all about resilience, re reorientation and reinvention. So they are the three R's for me. Uh, Last year, by March 2020, in context of India especially, it was evident that the global pandemic has created an unprecedented challenge for school leaders. And most of the school leaders had never dealt with a crisis of this scale and this scope and for such a long duration. The challenges were arising very quickly and both information and known solutions were scarce. There was no plan, no precedence to fall back on. We were plunged into the remote model of teaching learning almost overnight. The new normal, as we say, is not only a different concept for the learners and teachers, but also for the parents. We all know that there is a direct positive correlation between parent involvement and students' academic success. Hence, uh, the traditional learning environment of you know, a physical classroom and now the distance learning situation, it is imperative for the parent in both the situations to actively participate in their child's daily learning and more so in this online scenario. So next slide, please. So now if we refer to the slide as per the OECD article of September 2020, attitudes and dispositions towards learning are important drivers of students' educational achievements. Uh, in the context of online learning, they can help students to incorporate more efficiently the digital technologies and online tools into the learning process. Now these findings we can see also re-emphasize the point that the learning attitudes are rooted in the support that students receive from teachers and most importantly from the families. So looking from that pers pers uh, perspective, when we started equipping and supporting our teachers for this model, uh, the, as a school community of leaders, teachers and parents, we realized that now a much higher level of added engagement and support was required from parents in this remote learning scenario. So as school leaders, when we were, uh, you know, supporting our teachers, equipping them with different, you know, tools, uh, teachers were requesting for more support and understanding from parents. And the parents, on the other hand, were getting anxious on how they can discover the best role to play to support their child's learning. Uh, they, were, they were a dilemma of what they were required to do because they felt that onus of taking their what's learning for, uh, progress fell on them. Now, they also had serious apprehensions about how the learning will progress for the child in the remote model. Keeping these things in mind, uh, we started with strengthening relationships with the parents at the management and leadership level, as also as teacher level, by encouraging and helping every role player, especially our teachers, 
to make a positive personal connection wherever possible with every parent and guardian especially during the un uncertainty which was surrounding the change in the school year this was the topmost step which we took and uh, the main action and then came sharing information about learning with parents so this was uh, the intended the uh, intention was to reduce parent anxiety and creating a welcoming environment for them so we started with in order to help both the parents and students stay informed um, about uh, our evolving plans related to the remote learning related to the kind of you know technology we were bringing into the remote learning we looked at increasing our communication with the parents now attempting to find new and improved improved ways to communicate we started by interacting with parents at different levels so at the senior manager level class level teachers level through various channels virtual meetings using forms and surveys emails phone calls using the student information system the learner management system uh, so i'll just take you through what we were doing in our context in the schools so next slide please thank you so the communication channels which we were using were used not only to share our evolving plans but also to understand the parents concerns leading to establishing and strengthening the trust and confidence so in short what we tried to do were we addressed their key questions around remote learning such as what we were doing why we were doing how we were doing and when we were doing it so we had online coffee meets for interaction of parents with senior leadership and management this we did at the start of the session and in between when there were certain changes we were trying to bring in in the technology and platform which we were using then we arranged for regular tea with teachers program so at regular intervals we gave our parents opportunity for receiving and discussing informal and formal feedback on the, their child's learning progress and of course this was a chance for them to share their concerns if they had any regarding any of the technology platform apps they're using or any concern related to teaching learning so our counselors conducted regular sessions to support parents and provide them guidance on managing and coping through these stressful times daily grade wise reflection sessions we incorporated into our regular timetable so we conducted these where in the parents could join in along with the child to discuss concerns uh, related to academics what they had been following throughout the day in the cl remote classrooms for better understanding of any aspect of classroom learning it was kind of a tutorial or extra guidance sessions for students and parents both we regularly shared on the updates on the digital platforms and the technical apps we were using or introducing and in fact we also held orientations and training sessions for the parents to help them understand the intended usage of these apps and platforms and we provided them with technical support in handling and navigating through these so curriculum walks at the start of the academic sessions were something uh, which i would like to you know mention that we conducted wherein we mirrored the classroom teaching techniques we kind of modeled it we oriented the parents on lesson deliveries through videos Uh, voice over ppts how assessment and assignments would be used and uh, how we would provide opportunities for bringing in collaborative learning in this remote model so here i would like to mention what uh, you know i had uh, seen ronda advising during her question and answer session that we really need to equip the parents with the right support and resources help them understand that it's the quality of resources and tasks which is important and not the quantity and in our school's con context i would uh, share with you that we observed that the increased partnership between parents and teachers have led led to multifold increases in assignment completion it also has resulted in more engaged students in classroom which actually we found that it was proportional to the increased participation of parents at home and one of the most common reactions uh, we are receiving from parents now at the end of the session is one of gratitude and appreciation for our teachers so i would like to conclude my thoughts here and by thanking anna and csc for giving me this platform and opportunity to share with you all my experiences as a school leader and now i would like to hand it over to valerie my colleague here and i'm waiting to hear from her her, her thoughts and experiences over to valerie thank you so much alka thanks for such a great presentation uh my name is valerie menu i'm based in Accra Ghana and I'm the principal of the Roman Ridge School. Uh we're an accredited UK independent school and we're a proud Cambridge school offering IGCSE AS and A level. 
Uh, we're committed to providing accessible UK independent school education for our families who are predominantly Ghanaian or long-term residents here. And today I've been asked to share some advice with you uh, as fellow school leaders. Uh, on the screen, you'll see the slide that uh, they put together uh, with four points. And the first one is really keeping things clear, simple, and realistic. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about innovation, and uh, innovation is exciting, it's important, uh, but a strong, united, quality implementation across the board is absolutely critical for success. And, you know, with schools not being able to provide extensive training, uh, fancy online platforms with lots of moving parts and convoluted instructions means a lot of back and forth, troubleshooting and a lot of frustration for, for us who are leading these schools. And you know, my advice is really trying to keep your goals realistic, refining your instructions and communication before you share them out, uh, making sure everything is simple and clear for every single person. Uh, in our school, we really try to measure our success by the performance of the whole team, not just the majority. Um, my second point is the, the importance of really focusing on supporting and growing staff to deliver their very best. And I think school leaders need to remember that we're not on the ground implementers and the success of our programs uh, and our pupils really comes down to the final implementer who is on the ground. And that great quality implementation, uh, pupil learning experience and service delivery for, our, for, for everyone uh, really comes down to our staff not just our teachers, our admin staff, our non-teaching staff, whose role it is to, to keep these wheels turning in our schools. They're indispensable and they're often overlooked. And you know, aside our role as instructional leaders, leading the building of a culture of positivity and sensitivity during this time really should be the priority for every school leader. And, and Dr. Bondi's brilliant keynote, I think really talked about the importance of creating space for teacher thinking, uh, reflection, which requires our practitioners to be mindful to be clear, to be mentally focused, and, and to get that, it requires nurturing from us. Um, you know, ongoing recalibration, check-ins from school leaders to keep staff mentally positive, emotionally upbeat, optimistic, which then in turn translates to our children. And our children are just mirrors of the kind of energy that we're pushing into their direction. And um, I think as school leaders, we also need to focus on building up our staff's confidence to, to navigate this period and ask for help when, when they're struggling. Uh, we, we, have to, we have to nurture their, their, their own emotional capacity so that they can in turn offer comfort, reassurance, and lead their pupils and families to cope and even thrive uh, during this really difficult time. And my third point is focusing on sustainable gains. Um, as I mentioned, innovation is great, but we stand the risk of burning a huge amount of energy uh, on programs and initiatives that are brilliant, but very niche, very situationally specific. Uh, every new thing requires energy to, for orientation, for liftoff, for monitoring, you know, cost benefit, how much mileage are we actually getting out of these new shiny programs that we're trying to introduce? Is it, is it really worth the sweat investment that is required? Um, this informed our approach. We, we started with an asynchronous program, very streamlined, and then over time we introduced uh, live stream virtual lessons using MS Teams, and we tried to stagger things to be able to make sure all of our staff were comfortable. We had all the infrastructure in place. Uh, our pupils and our parents were also on board and ready. Uh, and all of the digital lessons that we put together uh, that were part of our asynchronous program, we're using. We're still using them, even though our children have come back to school. And it's a wonderful resource for teacher training. Uh, our Teams platform is still active. So everything that we invested time and energy into, we're still using. And, and last but not least, but I think most important for school leaders is, is taking care of yourself. Um, school leaders really need to focus and spend energy to stay healthy, positive, to stay strong mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, you know, we can't lead effectively if we're tapped out, if we're burnt out. People, again, reflect the kind of energy that we're putting out there. And I think setting clear boundaries for ourselves and taking time for ourselves to recharge, to fill up. Uh, you know, to be a successful leader, you, you have to have a full life and you need to enjoy a balanced life. And this also helps you to champion the importance of a balance for your staff so that they can also deliver their best too. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but um, I think also managing expectations before they snowball into unachievables is also really important. Learning to say no as a school leader is, is, a, is a huge skill. And in our schools, you know, we, we believe in partnership. 
Um, you know, previously we were talking about the importance of parent partnership, and I think because we were committed to that as well, we've been able to develop a strong rapport and collaboration with our parents. So when something comes up and, and, and we have to say no, you know, we know that we're not going to be able to deliver on a recommendation or we're not going to be able to, to, to go ahead with a request. Uh, we say no nicely, we say it firmly, and it's not defeat, you know, it's not failure, it's good leadership. And I think another thing that we have to really try and commit to is investing in others, empowering them to stand up and shine. There are things that are critical to the success of all your wonderful schools that only you can do. You're the only one in a position to be able to do it. And I think we need to identify those things. We need to delegate the rest. Uh, you know, it's really difficult to do, but once you do and you get into that rhythm of things, there's no turning back and you're building capacity in your schools, you're also creating new leaders in the process. It's a win-win for everyone. And um, I, I, really, I really think that if our schools are, are not fulfilling and inspiring places to work, then they're not going to be inspiring places to learn. And it's our staff who take care of our pupils and our families, and we always have to keep them at the forefront of everything we do, not just technically, uh, you know, building capacity, but also supporting them emotionally, mentally, and physically. Um, I really thank Cambridge for the opportunity to share these tips with you. I hope you found some of them useful. Um, I, I think as I, before I hand over to, to Anna, I, I think we have to remember that we're custodians of human institutions. Uh, you know, these institutions are, are alive. They're buzzing with a myriad of emotions and relationships. Uh, we applaud you for the great work that you're doing in your excellent schools. We celebrate all of you. Uh, and everything you've achieved in these unprecedented times, this, uh, the strength and the great work you're doing has helped an entire generation of children across the world. And I think it's really something to be proud of. Um, I'll hand over to, to Anna now so we can move on to the next segment. Valerie, thank you so much for that. And um, I think what you said at the end there is so important. We don't go into teaching school leadership because we want to be very rich or we want great status we do it because we really care and therefore there's a danger for all of us that we don't give ourselves that self-care and then we're just exhausted and we can't serve our students and their families so I think that's such an important message that we need to give ourselves as leaders permission to take that time to rest so thank you for that um, we've heard some amazing things from the panels, and I want to thank all our panellists for really thought-provoking and insightful words. Thank you. Um, now it's your chance. We would love to hear what you have to say. We're going to share in the chat a link to a Padlet board, and we'd like you to share your practical tips for remote learning, blended learning, we will have the chance to pick out one or two of these things now but really this is for you for afterwards you'll have the link you can go back into it you can see what your colleagues have put in there and we want to make this a real resource for you and we'll make sure those boards are shared um, after this session as well so over to you i'm going to give you a few moments to put some ideas into that padlet board so you haven't lost your sound i'm just going to give you a little wait time to fill some things in and I really look forward to hearing what you have to say. And I think if we are uh, wonderful, they're ahead of me every time. <laughs> Thank you, my events team.
just going to give you a minute more to put your ideas on and then I'm going to pick out a couple of things and I'm going to ask our panel as well each to choose one thing that they really want to emphasize so just a warning to you there panel Thank you. And do feel free to keep contributing to that. We'll leave this up as we, we talk it through. So much here, a lot on communication, staff well-being. Um, the one I'm going to pick out on is the person that said, trust your teachers. They are real assets. And if we believe um, them, they can deliver the best innovative lessons. And I, that, that sense of our fantastic staff assets that we have. And that faith that we can have in them is, is the one that I would definitely want to pick out because I know both as a leader and as someone that has been led that it's when someone has that faith in you that you do your very best work. So thank you to whoever put that up. Um, I'm going to ask Alka to choose your favourite first, Alka. Uh and now I would, uh, you know, you have chosen what uh, stolen my eye. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. It's one of the most important factor which benefits everyone in the school community, the parents, the teachers, the students. So trust is a factor which should be the culture of every school, I feel. And it brings about collaboration. It leaves the teacher. When Rhonda was talking about having thinking teachers, now thinking teachers need to be innovative. They need to be experimental. And unless we have the trust in the teachers, it would be difficult for them to you know, experiment or innovate. So let them make mistakes, let them improve on it, let them rethink. So it's a wonderful point which has been shared there. So thank you for giving me opportunity to you know, talk about the same point. <laughs> Thanks, Alka, that's absolutely fine. Valerie, what would you pick out? Um, I would say, I saw something there, uh, we work with humans. You know, and I, I, it reminds me of something that we were discussing during one of our staff meetings that, you know, we don't work in a factory. Um, you know, this is a human institution. We're dealing with people all the time. And I think sometimes we can get carried away with a lot of design and a lot of planning, which is important. I mean, it's, it's crucial, actually. But, you know, planning with the idea that we're working with human beings, big ones, small ones, you know, and all coming from different places, different backgrounds. Uh, and, and having that appreciation, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really about rapport, relationships, uh, being open, that, that real learning takes place. I mean, Dr. Bondi was talking about the quality of teaching and learning and being able to truly engage. Uh, and, and I think that if there's not an appreciation of the humanity of the work that we do, it's going to be very difficult to be able to achieve that. So I really like that point that we work with humans. I think it's fundamental to what it is that we do. Thank you. Yes, it makes it more complicated, which is actually the brilliant thing. So thank you for emphasizing that one. And Tabinder. Yeah, so what I would like to pick on is this interesting message about positive communication and encouragement. So somebody's written in times of COVID when we are interacting and communicating all the time. So maybe, you know, when you communicate, you know, start with a good news or positive communication and encouraging others. I think that that can go a long way during this time. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, if we could, we're going to, you said the Padlet won't go away, so you can still access that after the session. But if we could go into the next slide now, please. We're going to have our question and answer session. And please do post your questions um, on the chat. Yes. Um, it's mentioned that my moderator camera is off. Um, that's because I'm trying to keep the bandwidth preserved. Um, this morning, there were just a few little jumps 
in my video when I had that on. So I just want to make sure that you can hear me clearly. Um, but maybe for this one, I'll pop it back on. There we are. Here I am. Um, please do post your questions in the um, in the chat. Um, there is ah, here's a question that's just come up, and we're going to start with this one. Many teachers are suffering burnout. How can school leaders help with this? Valerie, would you be happy to go first? Sure. Um, yeah, burnout is a real problem. I think you know right now. Uh, especially in, in, in the throes of a COVID pandemic, you know, we have to be very mindful that health and wellness is not just uh, an extra, which I know, you know, a lot of people do <laughs> maybe, you know, sometimes think it's, it's, it is, unfortunately, but uh, I mean, the stakes are very high and we have to also understand that uh, there, are, there are real risks that are coming uh, with, with teachers being fatigued, uh, mentally, uh, as well as you know, their their physical health, which is also at risk, uh, even more so now than ever. Uh, I think that again, it's 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 about creating a culture within your school that you recognize that uh, you know the, the the emotional the emotional well-being and the ability for somebody to be able to deliver a program for for pupils requires such a huge amount of of strength and and resource. Uh, and, and, and what are we doing as, as leaders to be able to nurture that? Uh, are we, do we provide opportunities for, for listening ears? Are we, are we open when uh, feedback is coming our way? Sometimes as school leaders too, we, we're, how are we receiving that feedback from our teachers? Um, is, our, is our mindset that you know, uh, people are not being efficient uh, or they're not trying hard enough or they didn't read the instructions? You know, and that frustration about our plan not coming together you know, starts to build up in us. And uh, I think sometimes as, as leaders, we, we have to sort of put the brakes on and be able to also reflect and assess how clear things are, how, how, how streamlined they are, how simple they are. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's simplicity that is effective. Um, so I would say that with, with burnout, we have to always look at ourselves first in the system that we are in charge of, um, overseeing and conducting and coordinating? Is the, is the system itself contributing to that burnout? What are some ways that we can, uh, you know, um, offer some level of relief in that? Thank you, Valerie. I'm gonna stick with this theme. There's a few other questions that have come up on this that I'd like to ask the panel to, um, to consider. One of them also came up this morning, and that's the fact that for many students, they're at home, with their siblings and their parents, perhaps actually watching the lesson. And that this is difficult for the student and it's also very difficult for the teacher because they feel very much exposed to lots and lots of judgment all the time. And I wonder if anybody could advise, it's a very difficult one, um, how we could help support both our students and our teachers through that. Alka, do you have any thoughts? Uh, Anna, could you just repeat, uh, because I'm trying to look at all the questions and somewhere I lost the initial part of what <laughs> you were. So oh. I was, uh, no problem, I was asking how do we deal with the issue of students are often online and when they're online perhaps their family members, their brothers, sisters, parents are all watching the lesson and this is hard for the student and for the teacher and how might we manage that that that's a very interesting observation Anna. and uh, we all school leaders and teachers know that it's happening much too often in the online we are we are in the students home most of the time as teachers you know and as embarrassing as it could be for the students it's also very uncomfortable situation for the teachers so we do kind of politely remind or you know have a discussion in offline times you know send emails to the parents sometime that you know something was observed and how one can control or sometime general messages uh, at home so how to monitor online learning how it can stress a child if the parent is sitting all the time so when we had different forums for discussion this point was also repeatedly discussed that you know it created stress for a child if the parent is sitting all the time and observing if you're answering 
doing correctly or you have completed your homework or not or comparing it with other class peers who are there and answering you know so we did take parent into confidence and how it would affect the child and of course the counseling sessions regular ones uh, we use them to you know kind of clarify these and what kind of anxiety and stress it would cause to parents and teachers both so keeping the lines of communication open being open about it you know is something which i did it at my end in our school tabinda is there anything you'd like to add to either of those two questions yeah. either about your burner or that stress of being constantly observed by family yeah, sure. So for the burnout, I was actually thinking, you know, that this is something for which one important thing is that we talk about it. I've seen a lot of teachers or know a lot of, uh, you know, my colleagues who are teachers or school heads that they would keep on working and exhausting themselves and they don't even let, you know, they don't share that. So I think and in this situation, the professional learning communities, you know, your relationship with your head. So heads need to be accessible and teachers need to treat themselves also as, you know, human beings who need to talk about if they want to take a break, if they want some time off, if there is a pressure, they can ask for help. So I would say seek help if, you know, you feel there is pressure and they will be surprised pleasantly that school heads and, you know, school leaders actually care. And sometimes your colleagues would jump in to help you. So that is my tip for that. Um, as far as the other point uh, you've talked about, um, you know, so this actually uh, reminded me of very funny incidents where, you know, teachers have been talking about, you know, getting acquainted more, not with, just with the students, but with their families also. So the mothers have become their friends now. But um, I would second what Alka said, um, communication is the key. And then also realizing that it is okay to make mistakes. We all are in, all are in there and nobody is there to judge us. Um, so the respect and the trust uh, that needs to be built in by involving parents again, parental engagement is more. So why not involve them, you know, in small things and giving them some responsibility if they're interested. Thank you. And I just wanted I wanted to reflect on something from my own experience, too. I've um, when I was a school leader, um, clearly I was managing at Cambridge. There are directors that are above my level and senior managers above that and when i was a school leader i used to send emails to staff at all times of the day and night and i thought they would just think hey great she's working hard for us and then i received an email from someone senior to me at cambridge that was sent late and immediately i thought oh, does he expect me to be online at this time and of course he didn't you know, I knew that, but my immediate reaction was that I would be expected to reply at that time. And it made me think, I wonder how many times as a school leader, I was really trying hard to kind of care for my staff and work really hard for them, but perhaps giving them a message by mistake that they weren't allowed to take time off. So I really thought about that. It was it was really important to reflect on that. It's so easy to do without realizing that's the message that we're giving. Um, I wanted a few questions have been asked around observations, appraisals, um, teacher self evaluations, both should we carry on that during this period? And if we do, how do we do that? Um, who would like to take that question first? And when we talk about, yes, Thank you. And I'm taking the opportunity to talk first. I will just, you know, share a few of my thoughts on these that teachers motivation is important, but it's uh, it's not always related to the appraisals of their work or the, uh, you know, their performance. It's all about keeping them motivated and, you know, sharing with them regular feedback, you know, working in when, when this had come up in the Padlet, that building that trust if that trust factor is there, uh, you know, every uh, one the colleagues realize that they are being helped if they need, you know, any kind of support, uh, right from the leadership to the colleagues, everybody is there. I think that in itself is a motivation in a regular working environment. And of course, feedback through appraisal is also important. But uh, as leaders, I would say it's not always about financial support or other things like uh, at our school, we were giving them COVID care, you know, we were giving them support during that time. Many of our teachers did go through, uh, you know, uh, were affected by COVID, either some of their family members. So a lot of support in, you know, the, the fact that the community is there for you is, is enough kind of motivation. So appraisal as per se is 
I think was not important for them also for the teachers during this time. Thank you. Would anyone else like to give their view on this? Uh, if you don't mind, I can chip in here. Um, I think for, for us in our particular school, you know, we we have more of an ethos of coaching and uh, nudging and you know providing feedback for growth. Uh, and our our the aim of our appraisals, if you want to call them that, is more about development. And uh, you know, we have a system that runs, and it's it's really about I mean, providing instructional leadership, you know, providing uh, some guidance and some uh, coaching in terms of how, you know, maybe we can do things a little bit differently, how we can sort of improve in, 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 in these different areas. But I think at the same time, it's one of support, uh, you know, as, 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 as was mentioned, you know, one of trust. And I think once you have that kind of substructure of trust and you have that kind of relation, that human relationship that, I, listen, I'm here as a school leader and, and your success is our success as a school and also you know, as me as your supervisor, as me as your manager, I, I, I want to see you succeed. Um, once you have that, I think, underlying any process of appraisal or, or, or uh, professional development, um, you know, it's that, that kind of observation and feedback paradigm is, is extremely important and it's very welcome uh, from the staff who are working with you. So I think that, that, is, that is probably an important first step. And I don't think now in a, in a COVID period is where you're trying to Police. I heard. I heard one of the my my fellow uh, panel members talking about uh, you know coaching versus policing, and I think that you know everyone's trying to do their best. I think if somebody is really committed to working during this very difficult time, you know you have to uh, appreciate that it's something that they're doing with their whole heart. And um, our job is really to enable, and our job is really to enhance. So if we can do that, I think that um, you know our, our 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 children are the better for it. Thank you. And I can't believe how much the time is running away with us. We only have two minutes left, and there are so many good questions. Um, so I'm going to ask a question in a minute. I'm also Valerie. I'm going to ask you. Somebody has put a question in the chat in response to your point about self care, saying. How, what's your tip for how you do that as a head, as a leader yourself? And I wonder if you had the time just to pop something into the chat in a moment to answer that question, because we won't have the time to answer that. But I think it's a really, really important question. Um, but what I'm going to do first, and Valerie, I'll, I'll have you first so that you can go on to do that. Um, we've had a few questions about what will stay. And this is something that Rhonda was talking about in her keynote that we're not going to go back to school, we're going to go forward. There will be things we will keep. And I would like just very briefly, 30 seconds maximum from each panelist, one thing that you will keep from this period that you want to take forward into the development of your schools. So Valerie, you first. Okay, I'll answer the question first, I think, on self-care, and then I'll let my colleagues move, and then I'll come in <laughs> at the end. Um, with regards to self-care, listen, it's an ongoing struggle. I won't uh, put my hand up and say that, you know, I'm terribly great at it. I'm trying my best. Uh, I think there have been some changes that I've made personally. I have three children, uh, one of which is writing her IGCSEs, and I have, my youngest one is 10 and all of them go to school here with me, so that makes things very interesting. Uh, I think one of the things that I try to do to be able to kind of draw a line is I, I try not to bring work home. Uh, it's hard. Uh, I think as Kate was saying that, you know, or sorry, as Anna was saying, it's, it's you, 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 you're, if you're somebody who, you know, is really committed to the work that you're doing, you can be churning out work all night, you know, if, if need be. And you have to remember that um, just because time is there doesn't mean that it's the right time. You know, Valerie, I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut in there because we've come to four o'clock and oh. Blackboard is very fierce and it will kick us all out in five minutes. <laughs> so okay. I'm really sorry. Um, if panelists have anything else they'd like to add, just pop it into the chat now while I'm closing things up so that people have got that 
in the record of the chat when they come back and it'll be really helpful. Um, but very sorry to have to wind that up. I am so grateful to all of the panelists for their amazing contributions. So much that's been really wise and insightful and inspiring. Um, thank you also to all of you for your comments, for your participation. And as I said at the beginning, for all the work you have been doing for your teachers and your learners and their families during this period. Um, if we could give you a massive round of applause, I would do that. You, you are deserve everyone's gratitude. Thank you. And hope we see you in some of the workshop slots next week. Goodbye.